Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Live from the headquarters of TiVo Mike Solutions, it's the TiVo Mike Show, which makes sense. Where sin is dumb, grace is king, and die to self has replaced YOLO as a life motto of choice. I'm your host, Michael TiVo Mike Jefferson. And I'm entertainment guru, Mike Warner. Thank you for joining us, Saint. We're glad you're here. So glad you're here, Saint, to enjoy our show where we talk about pop culture and faith and when they intersect. And it's never made more obvious than when you sit down to watch me, them, this is us. Yes. So we're talking about that today and our scripture today, our quote of the day, and what's on our TV tonight. <laughs> and this is us. So <laughs> let's get started with our scripture today. That's right, folks. <laughs> in all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Wow. In all things whatsoever Ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Matthew 21, 22. I don't think y'all just heard the brother. I don't say the other word, but that would have taken you out of the moment. (laughs) Y'all didn't hear the brother very clearly. Because I didn't hear a shout. Back. You're probably thinking about Michael. That's because it's a recording and I'm listening to it later. And my headphones, though they have a <laughs> recorder microphone attached, it can't send it back into the wire back in time to where you were recording it. That's to right. which I would say, you still didn't scream loud enough. Because God would have made sure it connected, came back to us, and we, it'd be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> we would say, Woo! Oh, yeah. Did you hear what the brother said? He said, and all. What's the word? Things. Things. Not spirituals. No. Things. All things. Not spirituals. Not spirituals. Things. Things. Not (laughs) all intangibles. (laughs) Not googly feelings. Yes. Not gratefulness. Malarkey. It said an all thing. Yes. P H I N G with an S. It didn't say an all thing. Mm. Things. T H I N G S. Things. Yep. House is a thing. A car is a thing. This is true. A desk is a thing. It is. Television 4K is a thing. <laughs> 4K. An iPhone X and a Samsung 9. What's the latest Samsung? The Note 8. The Note 8 is a thing. Do you think the Lord's in heaven going, I, I don't know if I can pull off a Note 8. That's hard. The dude made mountains. That's right. And he made that by accident. He didn't say, you, be a mountain. What happened was two lambs collided, and then it kept pushing each other, and neither one moved, and so it put all that land. That's the ultimate compromise. Put, yeah. <laughs> and we look at it like, that's marvelous. No, it's two lambs that fought and held their ground. You don't even hold your ground in prayer. Mm. You're a nitwit. That's right. And you want to talk things. I can't. Things. Holy Spirit took over, God. Don't blame me. Things. (laughs) Clothes are things. Shoes are things. Bank accounts. Full are things. Yes. Full is nice. Right? (laughs) Overflow of investments is a thing. Dividends that pay out is a thing. Yeah. A promotion at work is a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's online. Things. It's all things. Salary is a thing. You know, computers are things. Things. And all things. Yep. All. That includes the iPad. That includes the companies. Things. (laughs) 
This is for the poor Christians. Yes. Who fight so hard to, be to poor. stay poor. Nope, I'm not moving. But it says rich. It says things. It says whatever. Nope, it means in faith. It means the spiritual. It means heaven. Okay, well, die and go there. No, I must endure the world for Jesus. Oh, so you, you know, you evangelize every day? No, I don't want to offend people. So, <laughs> so what you doing in life again? You broke and 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 afraid. Wow, a bad combination. Things, things. The airline ticket that Mother Teresa needed to get places—that's a thing. You know, notice she wasn't nude, no matter what you have to offer her. <laughs> but because clothes are a thing. Sorry. But speaking of him, prenup. That's a thing. Yes. That's why the woman was crying. She thought she changed it in time before. Nope. She's like, he was dead. Everyone's all sad, but she's the most sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still getting money. Get what? 20 times? What? And he has a son. So yeah, the son's getting all of it. His son, you know he's a cheap skate. You can marry him. You ain't never heard of the son that much never before now. Ever. So you know he's like, listen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be the new half ladies. That's right. They're all getting a pay cut, and there's no more reality. Amen. <laughs> and they go, how old are you? Your age. Never mind. Exactly. That's too long. That's too long. It's too long. My God. A prenup, and it's too long. It's a thing. It is. His mansion, a thing. Things. All things. Things, people. Things. George Foreman Grill. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> but it's a thing. <laughs> what, it says, Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Yes. Ask in prayer. Not ask of the government. Definitely not of the government. Okay. And this isn't a dig up Puerto Rico. <laughs> Y'all better ask the government to fix these roads and stuff. We should have been doing it before Maria came, and there was no pre-news about Maria. But anyway, moving off of that, because y'all are yes, in it and sad. And feel not like that. that. We're, and, we're not a politics. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, like, I don't know how to fix the roads. I'm not a, a builder. It took me a week to build my thing over the toilet. So, and I think it's still leaning left. Um... <laughs> You don't want me building your roads is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I'm not that minority. <laughs> uh, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing. That's the key. Yes. Believing. Not rejecting. Ye shall receive. Not saying, oh, all things mean spirituals. So those same heifers that say that to me are the same <laughs> heifers that haven't even built, been built up spiritually. Don't get me started in the spiritual. I have a Taekwondo ability in spiritual. <laughs> My spirit is fine in Jesus' name. That's right. You you won't get a scandal on me. Because I know how to pray about the deep things of the Lord. Fix your mind. Get your mind right. Mm. There you go. Don't, so don't get me started. I can go down that road too. You old heifers. Talking about dumb stuff, about staying broke, because God don't care nothing about cash. Meanwhile, you mad at anyway. That's right. Let it go. Let it go. So, point is, <clears throat> things believing. Yes. Things believing. And who do you talk to in prayer? Your brother, your no. sister, God. your cousin, Jesus, your neighbor, hey, Teresa, hey, Sue, Caitlin. Who are you talking to in prayer? Jesus. Ellen. No. 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 Unless. No. Unless you're, uh, what's Ellen's wife? Portia the Russell. Unless you're Portia. You, you don't pray to Ellen. <laughs> I can't do it. She <laughs> prays to the almighty Ellen. <laughs> Ellen, based now on season 19, we now have a hundred million dollars. May I have a call? And Ellen says, poof, there you go. Okay? Everyone else, we got to pray to Jesus. <laughs> I tried calling Ellen and she ain't taking my phone call. <laughs> She's a little irritated with my stance on gay marriage. All right, so um, 
Oh, come on, L. I still love you. Uh, not that way, obviously, because it's not going to be reciprocated. <laughs> so, but anyway, so the point is, but call me. Um, whatever ye ask in, sh- in prayer, yes. whatever you ask, believing you, sh- you, if you believe that, people, what would you not ask for? What would you not ask for? Yeah. Oh, I would ask for everything. That's what I'm saying. And would you feel bad that you asked for something? Nope. Does your son or daughter feel bad when they say, "Pop"? I don't know. They say, Papa, can I, can I have a candy? Do you promptly say, come here for a second, and then take him to the, the porch, <laughs> throw them up onto the roof from the porch, they land on the roof, but because it's slanted, fall off and land on cement and break their legs, take them promptly to the hospital, make them pay their own hospital bill, and say, ask for a candy again. Is that how you respond? Never. No, because you're not an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) You're not a trifling abuser. Definitely not. So why would you think if we ask God for stuff in prayer, that's how he would respond, people? That's true. He's either going to say yes or no. He He doesn't do the dramatics of how dare you. He don't, he don't. He don't. do that. How dare you ask me for cash? You want an iPhone X? I'll X your iPhone. <laughs> Doesn't do that. I just said, God, this would look cool. That's all your face, and whatever. He goes, how much is that? I goes, a thousand bucks. He goes, okay. So you're gonna believe me for a thousand? How do you just want to believe you for the thousand of bucks? He goes, well, but aren't you believe me for the cash to pay off your debt then? Oh. I said, Amen, brother. Let's do it. He goes, all right, I will do it. I said, bring it. He goes, I will bring it. I said, bring it now. He goes, okay. I mean, we talked to you like that. They he called goes, you in today from 8 to 6. Don't yeah. say no. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, why am I so busy working? You don't to believe it in. <laughs> That's how God am I. We talk for real, yo. So anyway, I just want you all to get that. I want you to all homework assignment. First homework assignment in two years over the show. There you go. Do Matthew twenty one twenty two. Highlight it in your Bibles. You know, you know, it's in your room that you never look at. Go dust it off because <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want to get a sneeze. Yeah. And um, and then open the book up to Matthew. That's right. That's the first book of the New Testament. And then go to chapter twenty one verse twenty two. Highlight it, underline it, and then read it out loud. Meditate on it day and night. Write it down on a sheet of paper into your wallet. Fold up in your wallet. And every time you go somewhere, just look at it. And meditate on that. All things. Mm. If I ask in prayer, believing, I will receive. Wow. Everything. How it goes. There's How it no. Goes. Uh, what's that word? There's no restriction. Consequence. There's no string to test. None. There's no asterisk. Yeah. That said, well, we're going to max you out at 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> God doesn't say, but you have to tear first. That's right. God's good that way. He don't say, unless you have bad leaders, unless you worked at a bank in America, unless you 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 work for a cross that's blue, or if you have a case that you want to show. That's right. He he doesn't he doesn't give you no no never mind on it. That's right. That's all. He don't care how many shields that are legal you got. He'll bless you anyway. That's right. You're right. Come on. Am I preaching or am I preaching? You're preaching. He don't give no never mind what Stuart was in your building. <laughs> he will do what he said. Whatever you ask in prayer. Yes. He will let you return $500 shoes and get the $25 pair you wanted to begin with. He will make it happen. So proud of you. He'll let that credit so fast. He'll let you have a stupid, dumb, white moment. <laughs> and he'll forgive you anyway. He said, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. If it's for a new car, new house, new clothes, new stuff, new location, new whatever, he will make it happen. Pray to him. Make sure you're believing, and you shall receive. This is a T-Bone Mike Show.
What if I told you the Bible is not a book of fairy tale stories and moral analogies? It is the miraculously preserved record of God's involvement in man's reality. Through it, God shares with us His deep love for humanity, regardless of our mistakes, sins, and insanity. You see, it's not just a book of do's and don'ts for you and I, or a lesson in ethics so I can be a good person before I die. It is the message from God that this world has sold me a lie. But Jesus came to share the truth, show the way, and give eternal life. Yes, the Bible reveals the sin nature within every man, yet its purpose is not to say that you're worthless, but a treasure designed by God's very hand. When God says that He loves you, He means right where you stand. It's His immeasurable love for you that orchestrated this master plan. From the very beginning, loving you has been a speciality. He chose your eye color, body type, and personality. He made you unique and gave you a nationality. Though you may feel unimportant, you're His masterpiece in actuality. Fast forward to Jesus hanging by three nails on a tree, gasping for air. He was barely able to breathe. He cried out, Father, forgive them. He was praying for you and for me. This Jesus pleading with God to make us blind men see. I mean, this was God's only son separated from his father's presence, forsaken and disconnected so that I could be spared my sentence and adopted into sonship through the simple act of repentance. Because of Jesus, not by merit, I've received this acceptance. Did I mention this good news is not for me only, but for all of God's creation? That through His love, He sent His Son to bring you into salvation. He accepted every beating while knowing many would reject this reconciliation. But to Jesus, you were worth every moment of His torture in order to secure your emancipation. Oh, and three days after Jesus had died, by the power of God, He was brought back to life. And as He walked out from the tomb, Mary looked at Him with her own eyes and ran back to the disciples to share, Jesus is alive. Notice God entrusted a woman to be the first person to tell the guy. Well, the disciples laughed and thought, this woman has lost her mind. Even the disciples still had doubts after all this time. But shortly after, Jesus appeared to them all and said this line, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age as he ascended on high. He said these words to remind us he didn't just leave us all alone, to sit somewhere far away from us on his heavenly throne. You know, to be in touch with my God, you don't need some spiritual telephone. You simply have faith in Jesus' name and He'll make your body His home. You see, God's love has nothing to do with my good behavior and everything to do with His unconditional loving nature. The Bible says we're like lost sheep hunted by wolves in a pasture and that Jesus is the Lamb of God ripped apart in order to save me from disaster. And like all good shepherds, God gave His life for His sheep. He came humble and meek, fresh meat for them to sink in their teeth. I made weak. I cannot hide what is happening to my heart underneath. Jesus is bringing a life, the dead man inside of me, and all I have to do is breathe. And from this breath, God breathes life into you by the words that I speak. But don't be confused. My words have no power and my talk is cheap. If this was all dependent on my ability, I would push you to sleep. It's the one named Jesus whose talent far exceeds any earthly MC. Whose kingdom is not one of word, but of power. Who's ready and willing to set you free from bondage at this very hour. Don't wait another second. The fruit this world offers you will always turn sour. It will never fill that emptiness you feel when you question life alone in the shower. I'm here to warn you that this world will leave you destitute and naked. It has you deceived by a 2D image on a screen since temptation first said, Hey kid, and now you're stuck in a vicious cycle of recreational sex and getting wasted. Like, wait, I thought I'd be happy saying YOLO and doing everything Drake did. Or maybe you fell for religion and believe grace is based on good behavior, thinking if I go to church, memorize every verse, then I'll be good enough for my Savior. Forgetting grace is a gift and there are things more important to your Maker, like loving the sick, poor and forgotten, the widow, fatherless and the stranger. See, if I have not love, it's just self-righteous moralism. And if I'm living this way, I'm in direct opposition to the God who gave His Son for all, who made loving you His primary mission. This is why I believe in Jesus. Because Jesus is greater than religion. Welcome back to the Tebow Mike Show, Saints. Remember, it's whatever, whatever you believe. Pray it. Don't be afraid. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just want y'all to know it. 
want to preach it, want to bring it to the glory. That's right. So what am I believing for? A lot. I'm believing for a hundred thousand dollars. I want to break six figures a year. There's no reason. There's 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 people making that. There is. There's there's an orange guy in in government housing making six hundred. So why can't I make a hundred? I can tweet too. <laughs> I can tweet mayors are lazy. Anyway, <laughs> our quote of the day. There's only one happiness in this life: to love and be loved. George Sand. <laughs> yeah. So. Something. Yes. That's what all those those old people in the church be saying. There's only one happiness, and that is to love and to be loved. First of all, that's two. <laughs> <laughs> but because George Sand didn't go to school, because that wasn't his thing, he didn't go anywhere else, because that would have been another happiness. Well, that's true. So he didn't know how to count. Mm. So mm-hmm. he thought two was one. There's our public housing, our public uh, education for us. It needs we need teachers. We do. We need we need n- n- numerologists who know that's two. Yes. Anyway, there's more happiness too. Happiness of like this skydiving, <laughs> eating, getting raises. Yes. Growing there's, up, healthy kids. There's a lot of happiness. Yeah. Marriage, sex. Ha <laughs> ha. People are like, oh, he, he died at 91. He died happy, y'all. Yeah. And of natural causes. Sure. Sure, that's what they're calling it. Um, <laughs> what happened was he said, oh, and then the name of who he just met. So what happened is you got to be very careful in your old age. Yes. When you shout in God's name, you're going to meet him because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a real quick question I want to answer because now we're on pop culture. We're going to move on. So and then talk about this is us. But real quick cool about pop culture. So he died. He's a dead man. Yeah. So when they say died of natural causes, what the fuck that mean? For once, it wasn't like an overdose, medical complications. So then what was it? I still want to know what what died him, what killed him. Truthfully, just what was it? His heart probably just stopped. I mean, so he was ninety one. So they say heart failure. Well, like, I want to know what the thing was. Yes. Well, it's not just sure, mystery like your no, body goes. I'm oh, sure that's going to come out like time is, later. Oh, okay. But right now, it was just a peaceful thing. It wasn't like he struggled. He wasn't dying from any terminal ill diseases. Okay. No one slipped his sleeping pills with his living pills. And, I got you. So, <laughs> <living pills. laughs> it was all like, it was just a natural on the way out. Like, he was, he's just old, 91. Right. But see, I, and, but see, I reject that in the name you of You know, Jesus. his kids had a lot of work in his life. <laughs> It's like a strain on the body. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was a hip. Um, so, it's close. Uh, close. Yes, yes. Uh, but we won't mention it on this show. But the point <laughs> is, now I just want to learn. Okay, that's yes. good. So it's good. Because when I'm old, I'm going to be looking like, oh, I want people when they see me when I'm 91. Yeah. Come in, well, anytime now. Like, I want you to know, I'm, I'm here. I'm eating well. I'm a vegetarian. I'm vegan. I, by <laughs> then, I'm only eating air. Okay, pure, un, you know, diet air. I okay, I am going to be healthy <laughs> as a mofo, okay? Still right. watching This Is Us, season 89. Yeah. This Is Us. Jack, still alive. First off, spoiler alert. Because if you ain't watched it, Woo. you listen to the wrong podcast. Thank you. Why would you not watch This Is Us? What all happened in this episode? What did they jam pack in him and Everything happened in this episode. First off, we got to see so much more of the adoption story. Let me just tell yes. you. Let me just tell you, <laughs> Susan Kalachi Watson, Ooh. girl, you are best through and through. Yes, you are. I love the whole scene in the office, and, and Sterling's like all happy, and he's talking. Yes. And she just riddled off. I was like, and what about this? And I was like, damn, bro, you ain't about to be adopted. Nobody. Right. <laughs> Nothing's going on there. I, she played that so well, I started to see her as the mom. Yes. And I don't like the mom. And, but but see, but you had a love for her in that scene. I, I, for, I did. for Beth, because you knew where she was coming from. It wasn't right. like, I don't want kids, or I don't want to have right. It was just like, you saying we're a team, we're supposed to talk about it, and you already made it a decision. Yeah, you're already so done. Right. And here's what she should have done. 
No, no, no. What she should have done is exactly what she did. Let her yeah. go on with it. I love how she did it with that, and I love how when they went to where... So I love the flashbacks this episode. Oh, my God. They pissed me off. One of them pissed me off. What? Because I didn't know young Randall saw them fighting after what he did at the bar. <laughs> wow. That was so freaking good. What the hell? <sighs> so that was one. I was like, see, this is why... And Randall still loves you, Jack. He still loves you, even though you acted like an ass at, the, at your mom's job. At your wife's... Yeah, but he didn't see that. Well, he, but he heard them fighting about it. Yes. yes so, I was like, wow. Wow. And first of all, can we just say, Jack, okay, maybe this is going to be good because we're going to have, like, two sides. Jack, I don't think he was a butt. I think he did the, what was what he was doing. The thing is that. What, was, what made him so bad? Because. What? If you were, if me and Sandra, right? Right. She works someplace and she tells me, you know what? Trust me. There's nothing going on. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There's no guy, reason yeah. for me to go to her job. First off, go to her job. Second off, <laughs> drunk and incoherent. Right. That, oh, that's, I forgot that part. And then hit somebody that she works with. Yeah, I forgot that part. So, he just but the to, hitting was after the dude said I was inappropriate. Yeah, she, she didn't, didn't tell him. He, she didn't have time to tell him. She's calling him at home, and his drunk butt is driving to the bar. Remember, she was on the pay phone. Why is she mad? Because she would have told him, and he would have hit him anyway. No, because would, he would have never showed up. They would have been on the phone. Right. She probably, he probably would have went there to pick her up versus yep. going there. And then no. hit him. No, the hit, she took care of it. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling this from a husband's perspective. Okay. It's hard. <laughs> it is hard to not want to be that guy to fix it. Yes. <laughs> However, she didn't ask him to fix it. She said, I got it. And when the dude got out of line, right. she wiped her hands with the whole idea of the gig. She went outside to call her husband and get a ride home. That's true. So okay. she, he handled, she handled it. Yeah, he and, and we as men, we got to remember that. Your wives are just as important. I think that's what it was, because I was so visceral with him. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been in that position. Yeah. Where and like, and oh. I knew that she had already, and I still wanted him to be punched in the face. Because <laughs> I was there as the audience. So, but I, I know it. Randall saw him. Yeah, and that's the thing. So the fight scene was crazy that Randall saw the whole thing. Never said anything. No. Um, and I love that. of the writers and the cameraman, by the way, that didn't show us that in the first season. You know, turn the camera to the right. That's the perfect part of so it. So good. So the now, flashback. what else are they going to flash back to? With Higgs. Let me just talk oh. about Ron C. Fish Jones as, as the father narrating I the letter to a that. son. Can he keep narrating every episode? Please. I would hope so. Like, I, I listened to his voice in the beginning, and I'm just like, I'm going to cry today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're, gonna, we're probably going to cry. And I didn't cry. So good. But he was so good. And then like, when he, he said, I'm going to give an addendum to what I said earlier. Yes. And then he revised the letter. Oh, it was amazing. Um, Chrissy Mann. Now, did he oh, give Kate, this letter to what's fun? So that's the thing. I, they don't say. Okay. That's so I think that's good. what makes it good. Like, that's right. what made it better. Yeah. Like, is this going to be something he finds later? Yes. And we'll find out. Uh, so, Beth, nice job with supporting Randall. Nice job with even suggesting adopting an older kid versus a baby. Yeah. Yes. That's that the part makes more sense. She, that's what I loved her. See, I didn't like her in the office. I thought she was being passive aggressive. And I thought she was being mama like. I felt like you would have enjoyed the passive aggressive because no, she's in no conflict. I am <laughs> passive aggressive that I hate it. <laughs> I hate that at all. So, when I see it, I go, come on now, do what I wouldn't do. <laughs> Bad, hypocritical. Yeah. Uh, but no, not hypocritical because I, yeah. I give myself the same standards. But when she said the old kid, that's what I thought. Remember when I told you? I said, if, if, um, if we adopt, I always want to think of the adopt and the older kids. Like the ones who are 17 get ready to be thrown away. Because once you're 18, you're yeah. not on any roll. Yeah. You're literally away no matter what the flip happened. Yep. Like they send you to Trump's house. Like yeah. I don't know what's going on. And you get a Twitter account or something. Exactly. And it's like you're done. So when she said it and she was right there, because at first when they were looking at the kids, yeah. Like, Why are you just going to look at them? But I love how so she, when she said, let's go help one of them. Yeah, those are the ones we wanted. Yeah. The babies all get fi They're fine. Babies are whatever. Yeah. People love babies. So I love that. You know, hate. people hate old Negroes. They do. That are teenagers. I like they were so black. They weren't going to adopt no white one, no Asian one, no yeah. Paco Chan, no Jose. No offense, but get uh, young Tyrone. Yes, exactly. There you go. Kate. Oh, Kate, Kate, Kate. Kate now. First off, let me just say you were amazing. Yes. Um, I was joking on the break, but I was like a fat white woman at heart because, <laughs> girl, I was with you, especially with that audition when you left. Oh. I was like, I would have left two all them skinny heifers yes. in there. I'm out of here. How many times do we disqualify ourselves? Yes, before we even get disqualified. We don't, fight it. We don't give ourselves a chance. 
Well, we're not, not going to get it. Look who's, look who's applying. Yeah, so I was with you, but I was so happy you went back. Yeah. And I love that and the writers took, took it and turned it around. Bonus. Yeah. To go later? Because now. And you went yeah. at the end, and you're going to be rememberable. Whether good or bad, you're yeah. going to be remembered now. Oh but I love that the writers did what they did, and they said, no, girl, I don't care how big you are. No. Come here, skinny girl. That's Sing. right. He said, She's a backup singer. <laughs> So I love that he he so took it good. all on the talent and it was yes. really great. He's not he was like Simon Cowell. Yes, I love yes. that. And I love Toby. Toby trying so hard to prove oh. he's gonna be a good husband and a good boyfriend. That's why you put Kevin in his place. Go no, call your girlfriend. No, this was and I listen. He's being a bro. No, what you should do. Exactly. He's being passive aggressive the whole time First and being a whine little brat. And I'm so sad my feelings are hurt because I'm a big fat man who can't lose weight. Got it. So all of a sudden, what you need to do is what he later did do, which is talk the conversation to him. That's what you do. No, but you do that immediately. No, because then we wouldn't have that comedic value. Let's be real. The whole key thing was hilarious. I, I'm so glad I gave you that key for the emergencies, Kevin. Emergencies! <laughs> Like, I loved it. It's yes. perfect. That is um, so true. Kevin, but what didn't make sense, though, they had already had a camaraderie. Remember last season when he, um, no, but see, he was teaching them how to be a good guy, and yeah. he was teaching them how to... But it was never touched. It was kind of like the, it, again, the passive-aggressive ability to talk, like, address it but not deal with it. Right. Oh, that's true. So, that's why I love how they actually addressed it and touched yes. it and... and, and no and more passive-aggressive. Yes. Kill it, Michael Jefferson. I mean, kill it, characters. <laughs> Uh, Jack, you, we saw a whole new side of you. Um, oh my God, he's a drunk. Mandy Moore, Rebecca, Rebecca, you did it. Listen, if I if I was mad at you before, if that scene at the end when you said, uh, especially when he closed the door, I thought she's just gonna leave, right? And then she said, No, no, no. When he closed the door, I said, What the to so the guy? Yeah, no, exactly. I said, How dare you, I was Jack? Like, she's just gonna leave? No. And then she said. Right. Get your ass in the car. That's right. <laughs> you don't do this. I do. We are a team. That's when I finally forgave her. Yes. For being oh. a horrible wife and mom. Well, that's when I totally forgave her. She, she was totally forgiven. She, she acted like a wife. Yes. For better or for drunk. Yes. For and sober that's what or for love. Oh. But what I loved is that it really threw us for a loop because. He hid, he hid it from the audience. Yeah. I was waiting for him to be, I was really waiting for him to add like a blooper line where he goes, and I even hid it from the cameraman. <laughs> the well, you know what writer. else was great was, well, what hurt me was when she said, we're going to take care of this. And in three months, things will be back to normal. Right. And then they gave us that scene. And what the flip is that about? What place is burned down? I was the like, house. No, it was a bigger place in the house. That was their house. It looked bigger. Because we don't, we, don't, we don't know where they're at. It might have been a new oh, house. That's, they probably moved but it up. was their house. And it's the fat girl's fault. So she was eating by candlelight and then dropped the pizza slice. And there we go. It's her fault. So wrong. This is the Fever Mike Show. If you love TV. $405 and Libby. If you love Jesus. Oh, we're going to love TiVo Mike. The TiVo Mike Show is a daily internet radio show that features the best of popular culture with a Christian point of view. TiVo Mike teaches you about Jesus and popular TV shows with the entertainment guru, Mike Warner. From The Walking Dead to The Big Bang Theory, you'll experience entertainment that fills your spirit. The TiVo Mike Show airs weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern on Blog Talk Radio. Or subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. Learn more at TiVoMike.com. That's TiVoMike.com. When the night is closing in And your mind is racing I remember everything you said to me It took so long to find the find you through But I Oh, guys, thank you. As always, guys, I mean, we always have fun here. But let's just be real. This is us. Woo! That's what it is. What's on, on tonight? Us? Yes, tonight. And what's on our TV tonight? American Horror Story Cult on FX. Still doing good. That's right. Leap the Weapon on Fox. Boy, let me tell you, that was a great episode uh, last week. This week, I can't even wait because they're concluding from it. Oh, I can't wait. 
And then this is us on NBC. You know what I'm... I, listen. You know what I'm watching. If y'all call my phone, we're going to have a problem, okay? I'll be, oh, I'll be watching <laughs> it after I get back from church, which normally happens Wednesday mornings. <laughs> And then I cry on the i on the iPhone. Whatever. It's so funny now too because my brother watches it and he's in California. Right. So I called him. I didn't even call him about the show. I just called him to make sure he's doing okay and stuff. And right. And he's like, he called me later and he's like, I didn't want you to tell me nothing about the show. <laughs> <laughs> so that's tonight. all we got today, Saints. Don't forget, <sighs> this is us tonight. That's right. On tonight. NBC. Don't forget, nine o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everything else, wherever it is. Yeah. So, guys, I pray today's conversation doesn't bust you to live a victorious life. Really inspired you. To watch the show. Yes. As well. To bleed for things. T H I N G S S. Yes. You know. You ask for the spirituals are great, but you need some cash. Yes, right. You can't eat spirituals and that's live. Right. Look at Gandhi. So remember, there's only one way to do all of that, and that's to walk daily with the uh, creator of life. His name is Christ Jesus. I love you, Saints. That's right, guys. And as always, subscribe on iTunes and Google Play. Be sure to rate us. Also, write us if you like us. If you don't, never mind. Until next time, Saints, I'm EG Mike 84 on Twitter. He's Timo Mike on Twitter. And our show, The Timo Mike Show, is on Facebook. Follow us, favorite us, retweet us. Hi, Saints. It's Mike Warner, associate producer and entertainment guru of the TiVo Mike Show. And this half hour of our show is over. Feel free to join our 135 subscribers and check out our TiVo Mike YouTube channel where we have over 127,000 total views of show clips, full episodes, TiVo Mike soapbox, and more. All free, anytime, anywhere.